Mandy Lehman, a registered dietitian with Nemours, a children's health organization. I'd like to talk to you about something we see all the time that we don't always pay attention to, nutrition facts labels. Come on, let's go. Nutrition facts labels are key to helping us know which foods to choose and how much of them to eat or drink. Now, they can be a little confusing, so we're gonna look at one and discuss what all the words mean and the numbers mean and how you can use them to make healthier selections. Let's take a look at a nutrition facts label. It's usually found on the side or the back of the package. And the very, very first thing you should always look at is the serving size. Everything listed on the label is dependent on the serving size, so this is really important. If you change the serving of the amount of food or drink, then you have to change all the other numbers on the label. This label has one cup or 228 grams as the serving size. You would need to measure out one cup using a measuring cup or weigh out 228 grams using a food scale. That means if you ate the entire container, you would be eating two times the amount listed below. You know, sometimes I talk to families who get so excited and tell me, oh, I went grocery shopping and I bought all whole grains or I bought all fat-free or low-carb foods. But keep in mind that doesn't always mean that it's healthy or that you get to eat more of it. That's why you always need to check the label and use measuring cups, like these. Measuring cups are wonderful and can really help with portion control. So let's head home and talk about calories. Calories are the energy in our food, and we have to have a balance of the calories that we eat and the calories that we burn, like through exercise. So, if we eat more calories than we burn, we gain weight. But if we burn more calories than we eat, then we lose weight. Everyone has different calorie needs depending on things like age, activity level, and weight goals. Calories come from fat, carbohydrates, and protein. Next to the calories on the label, you'll see calories from fat. The next item on the label is total fat. Let's take a look at the breakdown of the different types of fat. Saturated fat and trans fats are the bad fats. They can raise LDL or bad cholesterol in the body, which increases the risk for heart disease. Saturated fats are often found in high fat meats, high fat dairy products, and a lot of prepackaged foods such as frozen entrees, snack foods, and chocolate candy. Trans fats are found in products that contain hydrogenated oils, such as prepackaged foods and some margarines. Now, fortunately, many companies are finding ways to make their products without trans fats these days. Sometimes you see polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fat listed on the label. These are the good fats. They help maintain your HDL or your good cholesterol in your body. And they're found in olive oil, canola oil, and most nuts and avocado. Even though these fats are heart healthy, you still want to limit the portion because they're high calorie. Some of the cholesterol we eat might affect the cholesterol in our body, but it's important to limit saturated fat and trans fat to help prevent high cholesterol in our body. Let's talk about sodium. Of course, a lot of sodium is found in salt. The body only needs about 2,400 milligrams a day of sodium, which is the amount in one teaspoon of salt which is the size of about the tip of my thumb. But sodium can also be found naturally in foods, and high amounts of sodium are usually found in things like bacon, soups, and snack foods. So keep in mind that even though you may not use a lot of salt in your cooking or add salt at the dinner table, you may be getting sodium from other places. Total carbohydrates. Carbs, or carbohydrates, have gotten a bad rap but we're learning more and more that we should really take into account the types of carbs. Underneath the total carbs on the label, it gives you a breakdown of different types of carbs. Dietary fiber is healthy and something we should get plenty of. It helps us feel full, so we may end up eating less. It helps us go to the bathroom. And for diabetes, it can help stabilize blood sugars a little bit. Fiber comes from fruits and vegetables, like what you see up here, and also whole grains. Now, folks say to me, I'm eating whole grains and that's great, but that doesn't mean you should eat a large bowl of whole grain pasta in one sitting. Portion control is still important. Sugar is another type of carb and it should be eaten in moderation. Whether it's natural sugar or added sugar, it's still sugar. I get a lot of questions about cereals, so just look for six grams or less of sugar per serving when it comes to cereals. Protein is a nutrient that helps build our muscles, our skin, and our hair. Most meat eaters find it very easy to get in their protein needs for the day. Vegetarians have to include plant-based proteins, such as beans, to meet their daily protein needs. 
Proteins help you feel full, which is why it's good to include them with meals. Like these nuts here. I love almonds. Mm, they're a great snack. Below the black line, you will find some of, but not always all of, the vitamins and minerals in that product. At the very bottom of the label is a footnote showing the recommended dietary advice for all Americans. Along the right side of the Nutrition Facts label, you will see a list of percentages for each nutrient, which shows the percent daily value. The percent daily value is for someone following a 2,000 calorie diet. What it's saying is, if you were to eat one cup of this product, you would be getting 18% of your total fat needs for the day. But what if you're not on a 2,000 calorie diet? Here's a quick guide for you. If the percentage is 5% or less, it means it's low. But if it's 20% or more, it means it's high. And if it's between 5% and 20%, then it means it's in the middle. The nutrients that are good to be low are in this section here. Total fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. You may notice there is no percentage listed for the trans fat, but it's recommended to keep these as close to zero grams as possible. The nutrients you want to be high are fiber and vitamins and minerals. We want a moderate amount of carbs with an emphasis on choosing carbs that come more from fiber and less from sugar. Let's practice using the percentages on the label. For one cup of this product, the total fat says 18%. Is that low, medium, or high? It's medium because it's between 5% and 20%. But let's say you decide to eat two cups of this product. If you double the serving size, you have to double all the percentages. So now that total fat becomes 36%. So is that low, medium, or high? High, because it's 20% or more. I just want to remind you to pull out your measuring cups and practice with them. Now that we've learned to read a nutrition facts label, let's use our knowledge to compare products. Here we have 2% milk, which is reduced fat milk and fat-free milk, which is skim milk. If we look at the labels, both serving sizes are the same, one cup. However, the 2% milk is 130 calories per serving, and the fat-free milk is 90 calories per serving. So by choosing the fat-free milk, we'll be saving 40 calories per serving. Let's compare the fat and cholesterol. The 2% milk's daily value is 8% for the total fat, 15% for the saturated fat, and 7% for the cholesterol. Check out the fat-free milk. The percent daily value is 0% for the total fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol. Now this is interesting. All the other nutrients are very similar in each of the milks. You get all the good nutrients in the fat-free milk without the calories, bad fat, and cholesterol. So, now that you know how to read a nutrition facts label, you have all the tools you need for picking out healthy foods and healthy portions. For more information on individual daily calorie needs, visit choosemyplate.gov. You'll also find great tools and information at kidshealth.org, the most visited website for children's health information. Their nutrition center has recipes, activities, and tons of great ideas. You'll even find a story about Brandon, a teenager who made some simple choices that helped change his life. Thanks for watching, and stay healthy out there.